Order, the member for Melton. Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise today to support the Wage Theft Bill 2020. Firstly, I would like to thank the Attorney General and her office on this fantastic piece of legislation before the House today. This legislation follows on from the Andrews Labor Government's 2018 election commitment and is once again an example that the Andrews Labor Government delivers on its promises. Victorians know that we deliver what we promise and here we are again delivering on that commitment to all Victorians. I would also like to acknowledge the hardworking member for Ringwood who has contributed to this legislation by leading the consultation sessions uh, with wage theft victims, unions, business groups and superannuation groups. In the previous parliament, inquiry into the penalty rates and fair pay committee delivered a strong report that highlighted the need for this legislation. This committee was chaired by the member for Dandenong, the now Minister for Women, Prevention of Family Violence and Aboriginal Affairs. And I would like to acknowledge her for her excellent work in chairing that committee and the report made available to parliament. That inquiry looked at the effect that the federal government decisions to end penalty rates had on Victorians and their families. Recommendation six of that report stated that the Victorian government introduced legislation to create a new criminal offence with an option of a custodial sentence for dishonestly underpaying wages or entitlements. Her work in that committee really highlighted to Victorians in this parliament the need to right a wrong that has existed for far too long. That stealing wages from your employees was wrong and should be criminal. The Victorian Crimes Act 1958 section 72 tells us that a person steals if they dishonestly appropriate property belonging to another with the intention of permanently de depriving the other of it. A person who steals is guilty of theft and thief shall be construed accordingly. Section 74 further tells us that a person guilty of theft is guilty of an indictable offence and liable to level five imprisonment, 10 years maximum. It's logical that stealing is wrong. As a society, we have acknowledged this far before our laws were even written down. Humanity has collectively known that, that taking something that doesn't belong to you is wrong. Countless philosophies and religions have continued to acknowledge this basic principle that we all know is true. This basic principle of law has acknowledged that an employee who steals from their employer is committing theft and therefore, as section 74 of the Act tells us, they should be punished for this criminal behaviour. Yet for far too long there has been an anomaly in how justice is delivered. An employee can be criminally prosecuted for thieving from their employer. However, if the employee steals from their employees, then this has been seen differently and often the onus is on the employee to rectify the injustice that, have, that they have received from their dishonest behaviour of their employer. Both the inquiry into penalty rates and fair pay committee and the consultations leading up to this legislation have highlighted the devastating consequences theft from employees can have. It creates financial pressures on individuals and families and often has wider ranging implications for vulnerable individuals, especially women, young people, regional communities and migrant communities. The power balance that exists for migrants in particular is concerning and in some cases has seen individuals threatened with deportation if they complain. There is a need for wage theft to be seen simply for what it is, theft. If the employers are knowingly setting out to deceive and deny employees their wages and entitlements, they shouldn't be able to hide behind the law. They shouldn't wait for someone to ask for what rightfully is theirs. They should be held to account in the same standard that would apply if their own employees stole from them. In my previous role at the Ambulance Union, I've seen many cases of entitlements of my members withheld in a seemingly deliberate systemic process. This happened particularly with the privatisation and contracting out of services brought about by the previous Liberal governments. This, this time in the Ambulance Union saw those in the industry placed into very difficult situations. My members were under constant stress, worried about their job security, often with an onus on them to prove their entitlements. Some employers would make the processes intentionally difficult and delayed in responding to grievances and payments, hoping that the member would give up because it all became too hard and they would drop their claim. Disputes were typically about overtime rates, additional hours, shift penalties, leave loading and withholding of superannuation and even the payment of meal allowances. I am informed by the, by the Victorian Ambulance Union that it is still happening today in the private ambulance transport companies uh, that were uh, privatised out many years ago. 
The pro process for rectifying grievances often meant a long turnaround for my members to receive their pay and entitlements, with many hurdles for them to access what was theirs. In contrast, I've also seen members who have had errors in claims for entitlements treated harshly and a perceived automatic assumption that they acted deliberately to the point that some had allegations of fraudulently making claims. The requirements to pay back to an employer was always in favour of the employer and not the employee. These two standards in resolution uh, is something that is long overdue to address. I advise every worker that they should always know the conditions in their workplace agreements and always check their pay slips. Taking for granted that their employer is doing the right thing is never in their favour. Unfortunately, there are too many occasions for bad employers to take advantage of their situation. We often see wage theft occurring in several employment sectors, particularly retail and hospitality. For years, people working in these industries have struggled to get entitlements set out in awards or EBAs because the widespread pra practice among the industry has made it far too easy for employers to cut costs. Wage theft can affect low-income workers in industries, particularly hard, but all workers should be cautious and always check their pay slips. Low, middle and high-income earners can all be victims of wage theft. This has a cost, not only to the employees, but also to our economy especially now as we seek to recover from the economic downturn caused by COVID-19 and the recent bushfires. It is important to fix this anomaly in our economy. Workers must have the income they are entitled to. This will help grow the wider economy as they spend their income in Victoria. Those in business who do the right thing and care for their employees as they should, should not have to compete with businesses whose business model seeks to exploit workers. Small businesses in Victoria are often forced in a race to the bottom as competitors cut wages and undercut legitimate employees who help create Victoria's economy. Often in economic downturns, those who find themselves out of work choose to start their own employment opportunities. Business shouldn't be tougher on these hard workers and employment creators as they seek to compete against other businesses involved in unsustainable and immoral business models. Those off opposite, whom often profess to stand up for small businesses, are completely oblivious to these individuals in our economy, whom set out with a dream to be their own boss, follow what they, what they are passionate about and create an enterprise that they can benefit their community. The parent who opens a cafe, the trader who decides to go on the tools alone, the office worker who decides to open up a shop, they, sh they should be able to create their business plan and not have to compete with another business who is undercutting profits by trying to reduce wages and entitlements of their employees. This hurts our economy and as new and existing businesses are undercut by unscrupulous businesses and individuals as they race to the bottom. This false economy means less income for workers to spend and less profits for employers to reinvest in their businesses and pay themselves. Cash in hand arrangements always mean less cash in the employee's hand than they should have. It means less money in their superannuation account when they retire, and it means less ability for governments to provide services and infrastructure. Anyone doing the right thing has nothing to fear from any of this legislation. I cannot comprehend how anyone can advocate that someone should have the right to steal from another person. Those opposite who went to the last election on a law and order campaign should be in support of this legislation. If you can't support legislation that criminalises theft, then you lose all moral integrity on any other issue regarding the law. Preschoolers don't need a law degree from Monash and Melbourne University to know that you shouldn't take something that isn't yours. However, some members of this house, house seem to struggle with this simple concept. This bill doesn't create any additional burden on the vast majority of businesses in Victoria. Those who will be affected by this legislation are those who are deliberately and dishonestly withholding entitlements from their employees. There is already legislation that says this is wrong. What it doesn't address is that it needs to be dealt with fairly as theft. If a business or an individual doesn't want to be caught up in this legislation, then the solution is easy. Don't screw over your employees. Pay people for what they are entitled to. The establishment of the Wage Inspectorate of Victoria and the change in treatment of those already breaking existing laws to face criminal consequences sends a clear message. I want to acknowledge all the unions that have been involved in this campaign for this wage, wage theft legislation. I also want to send a shout out to Luke Calicari and all at Victorian Trades Hall for their fantastic efforts in this campaign. 
and also all the workers uh, that have been campaigning to achieve this great outcome of this legislation. The message to everyday working Victorians and their families is that the Andrews Labor government stands up for them. In Victoria, we believe in a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. I support this bill and I commend this bill to the House. Thank you.